Every machine has had the same history. A long record of sleepless nights and of poverty, of dissolutions and of joys, of partial improvements discovered by several generations of nameless workers who have added to the original invention these little nothings without which the most fertile idea would remain fruitless. More than that, every new invention is a synthesis, the resultant of innumerable inventions which have preceded it in the vast field of mechanics and industry, science and industry, knowledge and application, discovery and practical realization leading to new discoveries, cunning of brain and of hand, toil of mind and muscle, all work together. Each discovery, each advance, each increase in the sum of human riches owes its being to the physical and mental travail of the past and the present. By what right, then, can anyone whatever appropriate the least morsel of this immense whole and say, not yours. The means of production being the collective work of humanity. The product should be the collective property of the race. Individual appropriation is neither just nor serviceable. All belongs to all. All things are for all men, since all men have need of them, since all men have worked in the measure of their strength to produce them, and since it is not possible to evaluate every one part in the production of the world's wealth. All things are for all. Here is an immense stock of tools and implements. Here are all those iron slaves which we call machines, which saw and flame, spin and weave for us, unmaking and remaking working up raw matter to produce the marvels of our time, but nobody has the right to seize a single one of those machines and say, this is mine. If you want to use it, you must pay me a tax on each of your products any more than the feudal lord of medieval times had the right to say to the peasant, this hill, this meadow belong to me. All is for all. If the man and the woman bear their fair share of work, they have a right to their fair share of all that is produced by all is enough to secure them well-being. No more of such vague formulas such as the right to work or to each the whole result of its labor. What we proclaim is the right to well-being. Well-being for all. In our civilized societies we are rich. Why then are many poor? Why this painful drudgery for the masses? Why even the best paid workmen, this uncertainty for the morrow, in the midst of all the wealth inherited from the past and in spite of the powerful means of production, which could ensure comfort to all in return for a few hours of daily toil. Well-being for all is not a dream. Well-being for all not a dream.